Uh, the next speaker is uh, Fab uh, Fabrice de Chamon. Uh, he's a robotics. Uh, he's a research engineer in human genetics and cognitive function uh, lab, uh, headed by Thomas uh, Bourgon. Uh, sorry for the pronunciation, because uh, French have, uh, French names are, uh, are very hard to uh, to pronounce it. Uh, in the in the Institute of Pasteur Pasteur France, he, he originally working in uh, image analyzing, machine learning. And his, uh, he developed a uh, life mouse tracker, which is a great uh, genius system. I was, I was working on this system and it, it's, it's, it works really, really nice with uh, Elodini. And uh, he is now involved in the study of ultrasonic vocalization and he will hopefully show us how to, uh, uh, how to uh, combine uh, the visual and the audible, audible, uh, audible sounds. All right, Fabrice, the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks a lot. So can you listen to me? It's okay? Yeah, it's okay. Yes. Perfect. So, uh, thank you for inviting me at this conference. So I speak about the uh, classic vocalization in the behavioral context with live mouse tracker. So as you said, uh, this, board, this uh, work has been made with uh, Elodie A, uh, who is currently on vacation uh, with uh, Zucchini, and uh, she is in the chat, so she, she can answer the uh, question even live live during the talk if you wish. So everything started with a text message from Melody A. She said, okay, hi, so I won't swear hi because I'm very polite. And uh, so uh, 10 years ago, she said, do you want to work on autism? I have a shank strain to study. And I say, sure, what can I do? Okay, so track mice and tell us what they are doing. So I didn't know that it was this. And she said, uh, I want unlimited recording. I want day night recording, multiple animals. I want no parameters. I want no training and I want quality control. So I'm fair, okay, I guess texting is free on your mobile. And uh, after one year of uh, lockdown uh, within the basement of, of, uh, of, of Pasteur, uh, we had this, uh, this thing. So uh, in an area of 50 per 50 centimeters uh, with uh, beddings and house uh, uh, that allows infrared observation, food, and uh, with uh, RFID, tag, RFID tags that are within the animal, the system is able to track with a Kinect uh, the uh, animals. And um, we have on the right hand side of the, of the video here, we have uh, the automatic labeling. Uh, so when we have a single animal, you have just a bubble around saying it is stopped, it is moving, it is uh, doing whatever. And when you have several of them, uh, you, you can see in here at the top left, what is the relation between uh, the group of animals that are touched together. So we are very happy with this. And uh, some other people were very happy with this because since 2019, when it has been published, uh, people do have it up to this. So we are very happy. And then I received another text message from Melody again. She said, okay, cool. Do you think you could record USV? And it is how I, I came to this community. So I say, sure. And uh, she said, okay, I want unlimited recording, very high sensitivity, several microphones to avoid directionality problem of USB or area that are not recorded well because you put obstacle. And she said, do it. So uh, here on the left are the different uh, events that we extract from LMT automatically. So part of them, because uh, we can enrich them, but you can also do it because it is in Python. So we can just stack uh, behavior together to create a new one, a more complex one. So the question is, uh, is there a relation between those behavior that you see here on the left and the USB or uh, acoustic parameter of USB? So an uh, USB timeline looks like that because the first question was unlimited recording. So usually we do three days of recording, but teams that are using LMT, they go up to 10, 15 days, depending on the different teams. So uh, on the black, the black line that you see here are the USB. So you see it is a very sparse data. So there's no use to record all of them, but uh, we, we choose to record them uh, only when they are reaching um, 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 an anticity peak that we can have thanks to Avisoft uh, with the triggering mode. So it only records when a given intensity is reached. And then this provides us a lot of file. And in the end, it's much better to have all those files. And then anyway, it is managed automatically than a big one because it is less error prone. So on the other uh, question that uh, she asked, she asked for very high sensitivity. So it's, it's quite funny because when you do this, so on the top, you have one with a lot of noise. 
and uh, at the bottom you have one with uh, um, a few noise. And uh, in our experiments, it's a bit challenging because we have cotton bedding, sawdust, walking. So the walking are just little spike like that, walking in the in the sawdust. So uh, it comes to 85% of the recorded data containing mostly noise. And then we detect automatically the USB, so those green area here. But sometimes the detector is also seeing this thing here. Then we use a machine learning uh, that will reject this uh, detection. So that's uh, the idea of the, of the use of the machine learning in our system. And uh, what we really insist on is that it's cool to show you the detection that we have, but we want to show you all the stuff where we missed the detection. So you can always, with this method, uh, go back to the full spectrogram and browse it through a website or even a local website on your computer to to control it, I think. Um, so Elodie, uh, I was expecting a congrats and she said, the detection is nice. I was very happy, I said, thanks. And she said, shame, we need to install a software to analyze wave file. So nobody will use it or even try it. And it's true because you have, uh, as Pavel showed, you have a dozen of, uh, of method. So it's practically very difficult for people to test them and to see if it fits with their need because all vocalization for experiments are a bit different. So uh, she said, make it run online, make a website. So I say, of course, as your desire, princess. And here is the uh, usv.pastor.cloud. So there is, um, uh, there is a front end server and three other servers to process your data. Here I just drag and drop a web file. And you see all the different processing. So it is a small web file of 30 seconds of, uh, of data and you have immediate results, no installation. And if you wish, you can ask for the uh, desktop application. And here you can listen for, uh, for the vocalization that has slowed down 20 times. And uh, at the top, you have your original spectrogram. And uh, at the bottom, you have the detection that we extract. So each color, one detection, and you have uh, very uh, simple labels like jump, modulated, or I don't remember the others, uh, that are here labels. Then you have a few graphs, but they are really here, I will say, to show off, uh, because the real deal is after is uh, those acoustic variable extracted for each USB. So you have all those parameters here that you can uh, see here on the website, but you can also download them. And uh, you, you end up with a zip file with your original file and a number of other files, such as all the figure in PNG, PDF, the data in CSV to put in Excel. Uh, even if I don't like too much Excel, I, I rather prefer database, but I can understand people use it. And uh, a mini website, so you can browse back all your, your data uh, on your computer to see if it's uh, really working with your data. I, I really don't want to, um, uh, hide or to lie. I mean, this uh, it's very important to control the data that you obtain. And then we have uh, the acoustic uh, characteristic that are extracted. So for the burst on the left, and for uh, the USB, which is uh, what uh, we are interested in here. And uh, the idea is that thanks to all those uh, those tray, we will be able to see if, for instance, the mean frequency has something to deal with. Uh, given behavior. So that's the idea of having uh, those acoustic uh, description for each USB. So uh, I will show you some results. So for results with a bit of protocol, uh, what you will see here is uh, based on three days of continuous recording on the same sex pair of familiar mice. And for black cis, uh, we have four pair of male, four pair of female. So it's only four because I, it was supposed to be a test, but it is a successful test. So in fact, we are missing a bit so many more. And we have three time points at five weeks, three months, and seven months. So we can see the effect of sex and age. So it's not really uh, related to behavior, but generally speaking, what male and female. So the male do emit uh, um, far less vocalizations than the female. And here on the y-axis, you have the number of vocalization per burst, and uh, also. Uh, whatever the age, whatever the sex, they do emit during night. So that's why LMT, uh, we are very happy that it works uh, uh, during uh, night activity. And also the males emit fewer USV organized in shorter bursts than uh, females. So uh, now I need to introduce this um, uh, another acoustic feature that we call the Arch Index. 
So it is the uh, thickness of the uh, vocalization of the spectrum, I will say. So it's not due to saturation. It's really a characteristic of uh, the, the vocalization. And we, we saw it, so we tried to characterize it. And uh, after, we use it as another acoustic feature. So uh, in here, you can see that female emits longer, more modulated and harsher USV compared to male. And the one figure I like is the one on the right here, where you have five weeks animals, three months, and seven months. As you see, at five weeks, there is no USV emitted with uh, this uh, harsh uh, type of vocalization. And then the female, but not the male. And then after you have uh, the uh, female here and the male. So there is a, a shift that we can also emphasize with uh, this uh, last uh, 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 graphs. So with increasing age, uh, both males and females emit longer, harsher, more modulated, and louder uh, USV, probably because they get big. And this occur later in males and, uh, than in females. So there is this, uh, this shift. So another text. So now I'm afraid of my phone because I don't know what's going on. Oh, this is still very general. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised that I brought it. I say, oh, uh, now that you have USB, I want to frame perfect synchronization between USB and event. And well, she's maybe right because else we can't do anything. And we have just what she said. And I said, at once, Your Majesty. So here is the scheme of uh, LMT. You have this, um, this view here. We pass through camera, LMT, database, and, and analysis. So we added a microphone and the Avisoft. And Avisoft is, is, is very cool because we can plug um, um, uh, specific outputs. So what we added is uh, uh, network synchronization. So as it is on the same computer, Avisoft and LMT are running its uh, very quick, it's less than one millisecond of network communication. And there is the latency intern in Avisoft that I cannot really measure, but uh, our goal is to keep it below uh, one frame. We have 30 frames per second, so 33 milliseconds per frame. And actually, if we miss one frame or if we are shifted by, I don't know, 50 milliseconds, I think it's, it's fine for what we're doing. And uh, here is a first example of the uh, context of USB. So with our machine learning at the very beginning, uh, the machine learning says, uh, oh, look at all those vocalizations. They are very specific because for me, there are no noise and there are not vocalization either. So now we can look at what they do correspond to. So here is a player of a live mouse tracker. It's quite, um, um, well, you don't see many details, but uh, here you see this animal here, and this one, this one here, and you can stick to all the different USB. And what you see is that the animal here is doing something, then turning back, and um, maybe sniffing like that. And here it's the magic of Elodie. She said, okay, I know what they're doing. They are peeing. And actually, this is a vocalization that they do uh, when they when they do a specific kind of pee here in the corners or on the edge of the of the of the cage and we also know their localization so there is two animals when we have the usb we don't know which one is emitting but here it's specific because it is a, a pba view so we can see which one is doing it so it's easy to label you see for wild type they are on the edges and for uh, the shanks three animals we have two here that are not in the uh, in, in the edges so of course it's far too uh, low to say whatever to draw the conclusion but just to show to, to show you that we have also the uh, localization of both animals when they are emitting so it's great to see if, uh, if we have a bias of intensity or whatever we can control it so now we have synchronized usb and we have the events so let's link all this to the first timeline so this was the, it's still the timeline that you saw just before. And uh, here now we are able to put those events like isolated, uh, breaking contact, approach, approach rear, oral, oral contact, oral genital, and all the others. And here you have the burst. Uh, and here you have the different USB. So you see here, for instance, there is absolutely no USB. And it's funny because if you look at what the animal are doing, the stop isolated. Uh, for the animal A here and for the animal 2 here. But just an example to illustrate. And of course, we don't do it manually. So uh, after, what we do is a correlation of the US USB with the event to know if the uh, USB overlap an event. And uh, uh, 
uh, here are the first result. You have the uh, males that emit USB sequence when they are idling or moving alone. And quite at the opposite, you have the females that emit USB sequence when they are in contact and during uh, approach behavior. So each time you see a, a, a triangle or a circle here, it's one experiment. And these profiles are uh, already uh, visible since they are five weeks. And here's another view of uh, this thing, but with all the other uh, events. So you see the male. So the male are on this uh, side uh, of the left side of the figure. Each column is an animal. And you repeat this for uh, seven, three months, and five weeks. So <clears throat> uh, you see that the male here, the USB are correlated with the stop isolated here. But we have this animal here that is doing something different. So thanks to him because he blew up our statistics. And um, here you have the female. So you have everything that is dealing with the uh, contact. Um, then we have the other way of looking at the correlation. It's event uh, uh, over USV. So here you, you have uh, for a given experiment, so all those are experiments. For some of the experiments, you have a 70% of the 23 events, uh, which are accompanied with uh, USV uh, for, uh, for the females. And here you see, you can compare to others that are uh, quite good, follow, and then um, those are not really but they are far behind the, the 22. So 22, it's when you have two animals that are <coughs> following one another, so there are in movement, and this one uh, is close or uh, stick to the uh, anogenital uh, region of the other animal. And now, uh, so you've seen this, and we can even get bigger, but we need before to understand this kind of matrix. So please forgive me, it is the um, difficult slide of the talk. So for, we can have a matrix like this for each acoustic criteria. So here it's duration in milliseconds. Please keep it. You, you see. So the events here are here. So you have the same here on the bottom. So if you have, uh, you can read like single idle, and then you can get to this blue here and this train too, and it will read USV in single idle have a shorter duration than USV in train two. So if it is blue, it is significantly lower. If it is red, significantly higher, and. So the other thing that is funny is that, of course, this uh, gray uh, square means that there is no difference, and it is a result too. So, of course, I don't expect you to read through all this, just that here we are at five weeks, and you have a uh, lot of different uh, parameters here, like the duration, uh, the frequency uh, TV, linearity index, number of modulation, number of jumps, whatever. And uh, what is uh, interesting in here is that you have a lot of gray square meaning that it is not yet specific to a given behavior. And then, how can I remove this thing? Oh, oh. And then uh, you have this at three months. So you see it get complicated. And you have it afterwards at uh, uh, seven months. Let me just remove this thing at the top. Well, I don't know how to, to remove it. OK. Um, <clears throat> so uh, are there context-specific acoustic features? So here we take the female at three months. And you can draw a conclusion by uh, uh, using a, a different uh, events and pulling them all together and using the different uh, acoustic features. So USB and single behavior are shorter, less modulated, and purer in social context. Here, there is no difference uh, in the, this different area. So the similar USB occurs during follow and train two. And here is a box of uh, when the animals are in close contact using approach contact, nose, 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 and genital side, side. And you see that it is almost gray. So there is no significant variation during this contact. And now, what about the uh, Shang 3? So for the, the protocol, uh, we have six pairs of females observed at, at, uh, at three months. And uh, at the beginning, we were very surprised because there is uh, as many uh, USB as for black cis. And also, the uh, Shanks 3 mid burst with fewer but longer USV and shorter interval between USV. Uh, USV. So uh, it means that, in fact, the rhythm is different. Uh, rhythm between USV, rhythm between burst. 
but uh, also we see that the uh, um, dynamic of the uh, black cis and the shank three is different. The one of shank three is wider. And also the shank three emits longer, more modulated, higher pitch and less arch USV compared to uh, the, the black cis female. So it's, it's a lot of, of, of data to digest. We can read it everything in the bioarchive. And I, I can understand that you may feel like just like a catalog. And uh, so now we see uh, the shank three go back to the same matrix as for the one type that I put it back again here. You see that now you have uh, blue squares that are appearing in the nose nose events. So meaning that this nose nose events is now a bit uh, special as I will say. And then you have uh, the uh, shorter, flatter, higher pitch and purer uh, USV that I emitted by Shang in this context as compared uh, to the other um, type of contact. So to summarize what I uh, explained, uh, for the black cis mice, we have the female that use more frequently USB to regulate social interactions than male. And also what is very important is, okay, sorry, I got a text. So Elodie uh, told me, stop the summary. Enough feature, acoustic features are not enough. So I said, what are the orders? I want to classify USB by my own visually, and I want to have multiple cameras all around the cage and thermal camera, of course. So I say, yes, mistress. So here is the uh, application that we developed for this. So uh, each um, box here is a separated uh, USB and you can select them. So here we are selecting, for instance, those ones that are uh, quite high pitch and uh, a bit weird. And uh, the idea of this application is, is that you can really navigate into all the data of your experiment, but you don't know what is the behavior that is linked to it. So that's the idea of being blind when you label the uh, uh, USB manually. And um, uh, the idea, idea after is that you can compare with the other user. So here, Elodie and I, we don't agree on this one. So it's cool for learning purpose. And then you can also um, sort again to get only what you uh, just labelized to fine tune what you found. When you say, okay, this one, in fact, I don't want it, or this one, I want it. So this is uh, the, this ID, and it's possible also to share between people the result that you obtain. And then once you have done all this, you want to know what is the link between what you just selected and the behavior. So here is the uh, other part is uh, this software where the uh, film uh, watching all the sequence, all your experiment is looping. And here you are looping over this localization. You have thermal camera, you have the LMT camera, you have uh, the Avisoft uh, witness uh, uh, window. And now we can switch to the first localization that we just label. And you see the animal is doing something. So I let you try to find what is specific to this vocalization, this one too. And uh, so maybe, maybe they jump and this one. And you see that if I stop the player here, uh, indeed, it's not a jump, but it's cool because this detection is not really one that has wanted to label. So it was just a trap to show you that uh, you can really see if it's related to what you are watching. And it is a frame accurate. So you have uh, one over, uh, you have 33 milliseconds of, uh, of uh, accuracy. And uh, so with this software, uh, you, you can also label things that you can only see by eyes, just like uh, the animals do have uh, its palm on the, on the glass of the cage, for instance. And then, oh, sorry, holidays are over. Stop this call and go back to work. Yes, mistress. I'm sorry, I have to leave. <laughs> so thanks a lot for listening to this talk. And um, um, if you wish to play with all those things, even if it is not yet published, you, you can uh, use the uh, website and we can also provide you the, the apps and you can also use LMT with uh, uh, Avisoft. We'll be delighted to help you. Well, thank you very much for your talk and a great narration of the story. <laughs> Uh, there was one question uh, so far on the chat, so I'm going to ask it, or perhaps, Lucas, would you like to ask it yourself? Uh, I allow you to talk. Mute. Let me see. You are unmuted. Would you like to ask it the question yourself? 
Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so Fabrice, the, thank you for this uh, very interesting story and, uh, and also the uh, very original style of presentation. Um, never a dull moment with Fabrice. Great. Uh, yeah. I have one technical question. Can you determine which mouse is vocalizing when you detect an ultrasonic vocalization? No. Okay. <laughs> That's a straightforward answer because you're using a single Avisoft microphone, correct? Yeah, but even if I use the two, three, or four, I, I would not be able to find which one is uh, is, is emitting the sound. I, I, this is not loaded with uh, triangulation, and uh, yeah, that's a limitation of the method. Yeah. Okay, clear. I just wanted to be sure because I uh, you, you presented so so many features and functions. Uh, perhaps I missed it. Okay, thanks for the answer. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, -bye. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's a shame. One question, and I cannot say yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there was one question, uh, I guess. However, it was pretty much the same. Uh, can you localize the USV that uh, which animal uh, is vocalizing? So I guess that's that's already answered. So we are preparing something to be able to transfer this, but it will not be through uh, triangulation because I, it, actually I, I tried to do uh, to do this kind of thing, but I, I, um, because of the sampling rate, which is uh, 300 hertz uh, kilohertz for for the, those animals, um, I'm I'm not able to provide something that is accurate and uh, I, and I don't really know if it is yet possible to use uh, the same microphone that you are using to uh, record your animals, to use the same one at the same frequency to triangulize. I, I don't know yet if it is possible. Well, I see uh, maybe a little uh, possibility of future collaboration, but that may be later. <laughs> uh, OK, Oscar uh, wanted to uh, ask a question, so I'm going to unmute her. If I, may, if I may add, there is something is that most of the vocalization are emitted when the animals are in very close contact. Yes. And uh, also, they are moving. So if you are good enough to have a triangulation when animals are still, it's already great. When you do it when they are moving, super great. And when they are hiding uh, the sound of each other, because one is in the uh, uh, no genital of the other, super, super, super great. So there's a lot of problems to, to deal with this uh, triangulation. Okay. Uh, Oscar, would you like to ask a question? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Faris. That was a really uh, great talk. Um, I tried uh, your uh, tool a while ago um, to analyze it automatically. Yes, I did. I just couldn't upload my data because of the sampling rate issue. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I just wanted to ask whether there is a way to get around that, actually, um, because uh, the sampling rate for our data was like 250 kilohertz, and I think they accept only 300. You just mentioned mm -hmm. it as well. So, yeah. okay. so on the website, I, I added uh, something that converts the uh, sampling rate automatically uh, after you, you asked. And um, I also provide to people if they wish something in Python to convert all their data at our sampling rate. So you don't need this step when you put it online. And uh, yeah, so. So it's possible now. Yeah, it's possible. But if, well, some people, for instance, they, they pick the website and they put uh, 22 kilohertz data or 44. And, and then I convert them online and the file gets very huge because they, they provide me, uh, um, I don't know, like uh, 30 minutes of uh, vocalization, but uh, of uh, audible vocalization is nonsense for us at the, for our topic. And, uh, uh, and then they, they blow up my website because uh, mm -hmm. I'm extending it to three, uh, three, 300 kilohertz and then the file gets very big. So I added some uh, little barrier and maybe best for you is to use also the uh, offline version of the software that I, I gave to, to, to people. We, we are waiting for it to be published to give it to everybody. But, um, and we have a, you have a nice conversion, and also if you want to batch convert everything, you can do it in Python. Okay, yeah, thanks. Okay, please, the last question, uh, and then we will move to uh, to the break. Okay, so I'm going to allow uh, Rafael to talk. So please ask your question. 
Oh, hi. Thanks. It was unexpected. I thought you'd read the question. Okay. So, Fabrice, I was wondering, uh, what is the, the um, sensitivity of detection of, of body turns? And uh, how is it related also uh, or divided between body and uh, head only? Does the system detect head turns? And, and what is the sensitivity? It means how many degrees of turn it will detect or, or it will report, report as turn. Okay, so you're thinking about the like mouse tracker part, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's it's really up to the resolution that we have. So with the Kinect, you have uh, you have not very very high um, uh, sensitivity, but the um, it's, it's difficult to answer this. I don't know. I would say three four degrees of accuracy for the uh, for the orientation of the animal, maybe less. Okay. And um, uh, after the way you want to compute it, if it is from one frame to another, if you want to have a confidence because you want a, a, a window to avoid the, uh, the noise or in the measurements, it's really, really up to you. But, um, but you, you, maybe you should watch uh, the validation that I, I just showed. You have it on the website livemodelstracker.org. And uh, everything you see, I would say, uh, as a geometry, you can extract it. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. And that was an excellent uh, talk. <laughs> Thank you.